celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is of course The Ramble and it goes on from now until uh, midnight here on the uh, east coast of the United States, uh, eastern daylight time and uh, we're going to do a little thing with somebody and then we'll in about 25 minutes get to our citizens panel and have some very interesting discussions. But first, let's check in with our old pal. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. Don't ask us again why his name is Bubbles. It just <laughs> happened. It was a, it was a, it was an act of fate, wasn't it? Yeah, an act of fate, and I can't shake it to this day, so I'm stuck with it. So yeah, and actually, it's uh, it was uh, it was Paula Poundstone, right? Paula Poundstone, yeah. Yeah, who named you Bubbles? Well, because of mm -hmm. your cheerful, wonderful. Do you ever meet up with Paula again lately? or ever? I haven't seen her in, let's see, the last time I saw her was November of 2002, so that's a long time ago. November? Boy, you remember. I, I, I can't remember when I talked to you last, you know? Uh, <laughs> so. Well, I can't. Yeah, the short-term stuff, like, I, I know I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, but I'm not yeah. good on that either. But yeah. Uh, older stuff I can tend to remember, so yeah, I think that's common. With I most figure people. I'm just hurtling towards death. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, we all are, yes. Yes. In a never-ending spiral downward. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get any better. I was talking to my wife, ex-wife yesterday about this, uh, Ronnie, and I, I said, it just doesn't get any better. You know, there should be some payoff for all of this. You know, I went through all this shit for, for like 78 years of my life. Dear God, give me something special now to look forward to. And all I have to look forward to is a grave. I know. And wow. Pain. You know, I agree with Marlon Brando. Was it, no, it was Marlon Brando when he died, and he just his last words were, "What was that all about?" Yeah, it's like you, on your deathbed, you'll look back over your life and go, "What, what the fuck was that all about?" Yeah. Do you have any? Fa do you know any famous last words? I had a God. I had a book of them once. I forget what. Some of them were really good. Um, yeah. Somebody, somebody famous is something about where's the light he wanted the light was going where's the light that yeah was his last word. well um, sam kinnison when he was lying in the highway dying looked up the sky and went i i i see i see or i understand something like that yeah yeah that, someone was just telling me that that, that happened uh 20 26 years ago this week sam died 26 years ago it was like it was yeah. yesterday to me yeah, it was the second Friday of April of 92. Wow. Wow. But, uh, 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 of course, uh, I, I came up with Isadora Duncan's famous last words. I think my scarf's caught in the... <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, all you Isadora Duncan fans, if I'm being heretical on this whole deal, but, you know, come on. <laughs> Um, now, why you uh, some people might not know who she was, so you should, you should explain that. I mean, I think that the worst part of uh, Isadora Duncan's life is that she had to be played by Vanessa Redgrave. So you know, yeah. <laughs> is Vanessa Redgrave still alive? I guess she is, isn't she? I think she is. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Lynn Redgrave, I think, who died. Her sister, um, and that was he. She, wasn't she married to uh, what's his name? Um, Oh boy, I'm see. I'm just I'm fucked. I'm just fucked. I shouldn't talk to any other human beings because I can't get out a coherent sentence. And my whole life has been about communication. So Isadora Duncan, what was the joke about she and she and Jeff K probably should have left the top up? Or? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, there are all these um, uh, ugly stories like the death of Jane Mansfield. See, folks, call, whenever I call Bubs, we talk about death. And we talk about like death. That. I loved uh, Jane Mansfield. Was, uh, 
she was, uh, I guess, the poor man's Marilyn Monroe. Yes and no. You know, to begin with, she was a lot more intelligent than Marilyn. She was, a, like, mm-hmm. I think, a Rhodes Scholar or something. I mean, she was, like, brilliant, okay? And she came up with this character. You know, she had big tits, so she played that blonde, big-titted character. And um, uh, but she was quite, I see, understand, quite brilliant. And um, uh, she died in that highway accident uh, where supposedly, according to the photograph, her head is on the hood of the car. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, surviving in that accident was her daughter, who. Yes. Was a very successful actress on uh, on one of those Law and Order things. Uh, right, right. What's her name? Uh, Marissa. Uh, Har- Mariska Hargate, or... right. Yeah, that's her daughter. People are going, what? Mariska Hargate is her daughter? Yeah, and probably more successful than Marilyn ever was in total. Yeah, it's uh, so weird that she actually survived. She was in the crash. Was she in the crash of that car? Yeah. Wow. Uh, do, I never hear interviews about her talking about anything about that, you know? Probably too painful. Yeah, yeah, but... Death, the great equalizer of us all. I know. I had a, uh, there's a list of, there's been a lot of famous people who have died on Christmas. Really? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me see. All you have to do, you know, the, the wonderful thing about life today, the, the, here, here's one of the great payoffs for living this long. You just go into your browser and you call, go people who <laughs> yeah. died on Christmas. And don't say Jesus. No, you, well, no, he didn't. <laughs> who, who died on Christmas? Here we go. I typed it wrong. They even correct my my typing. Uh, people, uh, who died on Christmas? Ah, okay, all right. Here we got some for you. Wait a minute. Let me just open this up here, though. This isn't opening up. Come on, open up. There we go. Who who died on Christmas? Okay, all right. You ready for them? Mm-hmm. This is a happy show today, folks. Here we go. <laughs> um, okay, first of all, let's start with. Um, okay, let me see here. Um, okay, George Michael died on Christmas, yeah. but we'll get to the, him for uh, in a bit. W. C. Fields, nineteen forty-six, died on Christmas. Our favorite. Dean Martin died on Christmas. 1995. James Brown died on Christmas. Eartha Kitt. Now we're getting to names I don't understand. Vic Chestnut. Have you ever heard of Vic Chestnut? No. Okay, well then forget him. That was it. That's the the list. Oh, how about uh, Charlie Chaplin? Oh, wait a minute. Well, hold on a second. Let me go back. Maybe this list is not as complete as it should be. And okay, Brittany wait a Murphy. Come on, uh, who? Brittany Murphy. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, Brittany Murphy, the actress. But wait a minute. A uh, uh, list of of uh, my uh, celebrities who died on Christmas Day. A look back. Okay, let's see. That was on this day. Let's see here. Um, uh, oh, 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 it's one of those things where you have to go through each page, and I don't want to do that. That's annoying. Yeah. Uh, this is. Fuck. I don't want this. Go back, go back, go back. Famous people who died on Christmas Day. Okay. And this one is all in Greek. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, celebrity deaths, 260. Long list of beloved stars and figures who lost. No, no, no. Uh, died on Christmas. Born and died on Christmas Day. Who died that on Christmas Day? Two, uh, no, 2016. Yeah. Oh well, I, I, I you you would think uh, famous births and deaths on Christmas Day. Okay, let's see what that that yields us. Um, who has died on Christmas Day? Um, uh, I I can't find it. it, it wow. it's, it's so far, for, so so much for Wikipedia, fuckers. Um, famous Christmas babies. You know. That would be um, Isaac Newton was born on Christmas. <laughs> so was uh, Clara Barton, Muhammad Ali, um, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. I don't know who that is. 
Robert Ripley, born on Christmas. Believe it or not. I, I knew Robert Ripley's godson. Uh, uh, Ripley was, uh, wasn't he from Santa Rosa? Or I don't know a... where he was from, but my friend Earl Dowd was his uh, godson. Um, believe it or not. Um, Humphrey Bogart, Jimmy Buffett was born on Christmas Eve. Uh, Annie Lennox, uh, Sean, Shane McGowan, on Christmas Day, rather. Yeah, those are the people who are famous people who died on Christmas, so... Anyway, I can't I can't find any more. It's like oh, Yeah, there's oh. a lot. But. I would have thought that I would have gotten a better answer from the internet. So my life is fucked. It is. <laughs> you know. Um but anyway, so what's new with the uh, wonderful world of Larry Bubbles Brown? Larry, I've been uh working, I'm still working at this age. I didn't I know if you get to I don't know if you should even take the stage of once you hit 60s, but uh well, they don't take I, I you. They don't take you. Didn't as, prepare for retirement, so I got to keep working. They don't take you as seriously anymore, do they? I don't think so. No, you're. You know, <laughs> it, no, they they dismiss age. You would think. You see, here's the thing, folks. I got to tell you, there's a thing called virtuosity. I learned about it when I was a kid because my father was a musician, and he would talk about people who were virtuosos. And virtuosity is a product of age, the ability to do something expertly. And uh, you would think that as a comic, having done this for how many years now? Yeah, 37. 37 years, that people would say, wow, we got to go see him. He's probably really good right now. <laughs> but the trouble with comics is and unless uh, you keep practicing your craft and are allowed to, it's going to go away. You know, mm -hmm. like, do you find that if you don't work for a month, and I'm sure that's happened, Oh, Tara, I, if I don't, if you don't do, I probably do seven or eight sets a month now, maybe ten, which is not enough. So it's like, it's like hitting a baseball. So you get, you, you don't go out for a week, and then you forget half your material, and you're struggling, and yeah. Yeah. It, it, when it, we were working like crazy in the 80s and doing, you know, ten sets a week, you could, you got really sharp and do your act, and. You know, there was a horrible thing in San Francisco called the San Francisco Comedy Competition, which I always hated. But it it was like a grueling, how many week uh, it process? Three, we had the preliminaries, the semis, and the finals. So it was three weeks. Yeah, and every night you were going on and having to be better than you were the night before. So when you were through with it, even though it was a terrible thing to go through, I think you were probably better for it. Yeah, it made you pretty sharp. Yeah. Uh, you, it was grueling. <laughs> did you ever make it to the finals? No, I had a lock on sixth place. I <laughs> you had a lock on sixth place. <laughs> you can always make money on me betting bubbles and play six. That was wow, wow. And I would have. I remember I would have made it one year, except I never got overtime. And I, the last night of the semis, I went way over. So yeah. Usually, when we start talking, you always have some question that you came up with, and and this, I guess, the last couple of weeks, nothing's happened that you wanted to ask. No, a I was trying to about. think. Of I've been too busy the past week. I did talk to. Uh, the last time we talked about Hedy Lamar. Yeah. And I and by the uh, way, the other night, by the I ran into your old friend Tim Bedore. Yeah. And somehow I brought up, I brought up Hedy Lamar, and he said, "I think she uh, was responsible for the cell phone." <laughs> Which I said, "Yes, Alex knew that." Yeah, uh, but you know, there's a documentary coming out. And I can't remember. I think it's on Netflix next week. A whole documentary on Hedy Lamar. Um, I believe it. Yeah, it's either that or or HBO. I can't remember which. And they're doing a whole documentary on uh, the life of Hedy Lamar. All well, of a she sudden, sounds so interesting that you would think this would have been done years ago. Well, all of a sudden, this is like I already saw a documentary that was out a couple of weeks ago, and then you know you hit TV shows like Timeless where they portray Hedy Lamar when they go back in time, and Agent Carter. Uh, which I'm sure you never saw, but um, uh, the bad woman on that show, the evil woman, was based on Hedy Lamar, you know, because she mm -hmm. was a scientist and knew how to do all these things and so on, was a movie star as well. And now they're doing a documentary on her. All of a sudden, the world is paying attention to Hedy Lamar. Now, how many years has she been gone, you know? 
But it it is one of the most remarkable stories ever. You know. Yeah, I couldn't believe the stuff you're telling me about. And it. I won't repeat it for this audience. Although, if you didn't listen, Hedy Lamar basically in, invented, along with a guy by the name of uh, George Ann Thiel, a thing uh, called frequency hopping, which allowed torpedoes and other such missiles to hit their target without being shot down because of the frequency hopping uh, weapons couldn't trace them. Okay. And the, the Army never used it. And then in 1952, they decided to start using it. And the patent went south, right, uh, on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, today, you've got a cell phone, and it works because of Hedy Lamar's invention. All right. Because frequency hopping is like, for instance, you go from cell to cell. That's frequency hopping. Um yeah, but she she would have been she would have been very wealthy had she not given up the patent, and had uh, uh, she lived long enough. But I think she, and she lived to be pretty old. I think we said into her late eighties or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, it's it's a you know it, it she's one of those those people that is just an amazing story because you look at her and she's so damn beautiful you'd think she just didn't have a brain in her fucking head. <laughs> you know, and that's a mistake we make. We, I, I think beautiful women have a harder time in this world in the scientific community than homely women because you expect somebody who's a, you know, a nerd, a woman nerd, to be homely. But, hell, I've known some, some genius women who are just gorgeous. So, you know, that, that flies in the face of that. But that's one of our prejudices. It's the same prejudice as you're old, so therefore we dismiss you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, there, well, old man. Just sit in the corner and let us adore you as an elderly human being. Oh, it's your birthday. You're 100 years old. I mean, why do people clap people who are 100 years old? They didn't do anything to get there. They just had to keep breathing. <laughs> It's like remember remember all those radio shows that used to have T V shows where people have you have a couple on say how long you've been married and they go, We've been married for ten years and everybody would applaud. Uh-huh. Like it was a big deal. So And they used to applaud. We've got ten kids, they would applaud. Oh yeah, they'd applaud that too. Yeah. Yeah. I would Thanks go overpopulating the planet. I yeah. would go, You should be assassinated. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking up too many fucking parking spaces. You know, true. Yeah, no, true. really. I mean, I, 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 we always adored these people. We, we still do. We have these TV shows. You know, eight and eight, eight is enough, or whatever. These different reality shows about families with too many fucking kids around the house. And I'm thinking about what that woman's vagina must look like by now. That's all that's going through my head. I mean, she had to yeah. pop, <laughs> pop eight puppies through that thing. You've got no kegels left. No kegels. I really have always felt the government should give you $10,000 a year for every year you don't have a child. Well, I think, I think you should be allowed to have two children, okay? And that's it. After that, you pay Capita ta- two. After that, you pay taxes. Now, people yeah. go, well, in China, they only allowed people to have one kid. Yeah, because they had a billion fucking people, and they had to do something about it. And it wasn't that you had to go out and get an abortion, but if you, if you had a second kid, you had to pay for the right to have that second kid, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, no, me either. You know, I find that uh, perfectly acceptable to me. Uh, I just think people have too many kids. I mean, to begin with, what are you what are you doing to the rest of the kids in that family? You know, you're you're you're, you're making, uh, boy, you know. The, you know, you always talk about like the the first child and the middle child and the oldest child, right? Or mm-hmm. the you know whatever. And you only talk in terms of threes, but when you're talking in terms of eight, I mean, you're middle child. You don't even know where you are. So, you know, what was it Woody Allen said in the movie Ants? The line they wrote for him: "I was the middle child of five thousand." <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, anyway, no, it's it's just it's too much. Now you haven't had any kids, right? Not that I know. Did of, you no. ever get anybody pregnant? Uh, once, yeah. Yeah, what happened? They chopped it out. We took care of it. Yeah, <laughs> took care of it. I I did some uh, I did some number crunching. Uh, 
abortion 250 or uh, child support 18 months, 12 months times 18 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, what, I was thinking, like, why did you want the abortion? Because you felt you were too ugly or she felt you were too ugly. <laughs> but, you know. um, although, you know something, you, if you had a child, there, there's some genius sperm going on there. Because you're just, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I think I <laughs> might have some number. The kid might remember dates. That'd be about it. it no, no, but I mean, that... That in and of itself is is a, a genius, okay? I mean, you're very, very, very smart, okay? You remember you don't just remember dates and days. You also remember incidences, too. Yeah, but you've got that vast knowledge of everything. So. Well, and no, you know why I get a vast knowledge of everything? I don't know everything. But when you're doing a talk show, you just by osmosis learn a lot. You know, just by listening to your callers, you know. And so uh, it was very important for me to have all this knowledge at, at hand, although m most of it has flown away somewhere. I was talking again to my ex-wife about memory loss, and she said they believe that you get memory loss because you've got too many memories, you know. That it's, it's, get, like, it's like a hard drive has got... It's getting full, oh. yeah, yeah. And and when you get Alzheimer's, it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so you just take it down to the uh, local shop, and they'll f repair your hard drive. No, but I mean, what if they, maybe they could do that. Well, you know, the brain, computers. I don't know. Are they smarter than us, or are we smarter than them? I mean, we did invent them, so we have to have some kind of precedent over over a computer. But a computer can can uh, figure things out faster than we can. We could never do what a computer does now, and that that's the big mistake. I mean, we're 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 giving up too much of our lives and our world to computers, and relying on them as being yeah. Well, we've certainly given up our privacy. Well, that's well for sure. we're giving them an empirical sense that they're right on everything. They got to be, you know, and that's not true. They don't have to be. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, so, I mean, and what, you know, here's the thing. We've become too, too, um, uh, dependent on all these devices. Let's say tomorrow for some reason, and it could happen, a, a solar flare or whatever, all our cell phones no longer worked. What would happen? Now we got along without them before. But could we get along without them now? Most people in their homes, you have a, you have a, I'm talking to you over a telephone that's anchored, Landline, yeah. anchored to a wall, okay? But most people now, including myself, don't have phones at home. They have their cell phones. That's it. You know, I stopped using my home phone six, seven, eight, ten years ago. I can't remember how long ago. When I finally said, I've got this cell phone. It rings anywhere. What do I need a home phone for? So I can hear it ring and go pick it up? <laughs> and yet the, f the cable company kind of forces me to have as part of their service a phone. So I do have phones here, but I never use them. I never, I don't even remember the number. You know, because I use the cell phone. Oh, damn it. The, see, the internet got, got rid of them. Let me call him back here. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, now we're having trouble. Okay, all right, all right. We'll try again. No, that doesn't work either. There we go. Boy, some okay. I don't know, the internet you know, Skype the internet something went down. Yeah. I tried calling you back about three times, the audience heard me do it and uh uh, yeah. Just as I was talking about computers, Just by the way, talking about landline, <laughs> landline. Yes, yes. Uh, th this is half landline. The he. I'm calling his landline. But I'm not calling your mobile, am I? No, this is a landline. Oh, okay. Because I don't know if I could call you on your flip phone. <laughs> you probably could, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old is that phone? The flip is now 12 years old. Really? 
Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. It's, it's, I think it's starting to die. It's, you are the ultimate Luddite. I love it. I love it. You have no need for any of this technology. That's true. I don't know. Like, like you said, we did live without it. And I think uh, all this stuff is supposed to, I think, bringing people together. I think people hate each other, so it's not good. So. Yeah. Well, Bubbles, uh, since I called you back, it's now time to say goodbye. Oh, already? Uh, yeah, already. It's been so much. Well, I want to. Okay, I want to. I would love to see this documentary about Hedy Lamar. So. Well, it, uh, you have to then get either Netflix or HBO or whatever it's on, and you don't have that. Or the oh, my sister does. She's got Netflix. I can see it there. Oh, so you go over to her house and watch. Yeah, yeah. So you, you go over there to watch all your TV. I see. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And hello, everybody. How are you? Good morning, breakfast covers, and how do you do ya? That should be easy. It used to be a radio show I listened to when I was a kid. It was a breakfast club. I think I talked about that on Life in the Passing Lane. Uh, but you know, yeah, I, I, this, huh, I, I, I'd like to be in the center here, but I'm not in the center. It's driving me nuts. Okay, well. What the hell? I'll, I'll work on it tomorrow. I don't need to work on it while I'm doing the show. Okay. All righty. Uh, listen, it's time for us to uh, go to our citizens panelage and uh, turn it on here. Get it ready to go. If you want to call us, uh, go over to gabnet.net. And the, uh, the whole primer is on the right-hand side of that page telling you exactly what you have to do in order to... Um, uh, get with us on the on the show, okay? Let me see here. If I move this this way, right? Uh-huh. Does that get me more towards the center? I guess it does. I don't know. I give up. I, I, trying to get things to work these days is just so fucking friggin' impossible. I um, uh, I got a new um, a new computer that I bought from Phil. It was a Mac Mini, and they're terrific. They're really terrific. But I'm having to set it up again, and it's like starting from, you know, from point one, zero to try and get it to, you know, figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to make it work, and so on and so forth. So I don't know. Uh, I, I, so all day I've been trying. I've been trying to actually. What I've been doing is relearning uh, the. Um, um, let me see here. I bet I can get myself closer to the center by going like this. There we go. There we go. All right. I'll, I'll leave it there because I still want the on the air sign to show up. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Anyway, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I you know, I, I've set up a lot of Macs. I have a, maybe it's I maybe mean, fourth, fifth Mac, sixth Mac I've set up. And I can't figure out certain things. It's like if you haven't done it in a while, like, I, you know, all my, all my Macs are set up. So, you know that's just fine, but now I got to set up a new one, and I got to remember where everything was. And I have things happening like, uh, oh, I don't know. If I let it stay there for any amount of time, it goes to my sign-in, and then I put it on two different screens. And the trouble is, the signing goes on the screen that isn't my main screen. It's it's just back and forth, and it's it's a uh, it's a pain in the ass. But I'm getting it. I'm getting it to work. But so when I'm doing something. I keep my mind keeps going to that, you know, and uh, well, here here's the guy who sold me that piece of shit, fucking cocksucker. Actually, yeah, well, your credit your credit card got denied. <laughs> the credit card got denied. <laughs> <laughs> it said decline, De- decline. <laughs> yeah, no. he actually takes credit cards, folks. Uh, Actually, you probably haven't taken credit cards in a long time because you couldn't remember how to how to get the credit card up and running. Well, at the store, I have these dedicated credit card machines, but I have this thing called the Square Reader, and uh, you know, oftentimes when I'm doing a photography or a wedding or uh, somebody wants to buy prints, uh, I I use the, uh, and also when I make the ear things for people, yeah, they pay me yeah. on that little card reader. But so you stick it in the phone, yeah, and you card through. Oh, so and, you, yeah, uh, you couldn't do that. 
Yeah, I had to type it in. So I gave you my credit card number and my little PIN number or whatever that is, and you were able to get on okay. Of course, charge a lot of things to me. So. Well, you know, uh, you don't mind that trip to Europe I just put on. No, car. not at all. Not at all. As long as you got two seats. Yeah, <laughs> I needed two seats. I'm, I haven't lost weight yet. You haven't lost weight yet? You would think that with the operation and everything, you would have just, you know, you've been a little off your, off yeah. your eating schedule. Well, about five, six pounds. Hey, um, is there something going on uh, on the GabNet site? You know how the YouTube thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, it didn't work when uh, you had bubbles, at least it, on my thing. And uh, then well, I went know, to... Well, no, it's, it's working all right. It's working? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. The audio's going out. Uh, well, yeah, I need to refresh it or something. Uh, the click here for the 24-7 feed. Let's see if that's working here. Hold on a second. Off yeah. your eating schedule. See, that's working. So uh, I don't know which problem was. Uh, it's it's probably on my side. Probably on your side, you know. So, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you like it. Now, has that uh, ear gene stuff made a difference? Uh, for, no, I, uh, well, I haven't had, I don't have the ear problems. Okay, right now. Yeah. So, uh, I, however, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, once you start using that, you yeah. go from like uh, one swipe a day to two, two to three, three to four, and then you start giving rich old dude head and limousines so you can buy that stuff. Yeah. No, but it, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, um, uh, what was happening is I use these things, right? Yeah. And no. uh, yeah, yeah, you, you use them too. And uh, I found out a couple, about a, about a week ago, my ears started itching something fierce. And I think it was from using this. And, right. and finally, I, I, put, uh, I put ammonia in there. Have you ever put ammonia in your ear? No, I can't say that I have. If you put ammonia in your ear, it's fun. Uh, because it's bubbles in your well, ear. And I, and I, I did that, and that kind of helped it, you know. Well, I, on the medical front... Yeah, here we go. Here we go with medicine, folks. Yeah, we're all. You know, I, we're, I went in to Kaiser about my finger, and while I was there, I said, "Could you check to see if I have any earwax?" And the guy looks in there and he says, "Yes, you do." Yeah. So they had me put these drops in my ear, uh, and this is just uh, yesterday. That's, uh, so you I, know what that I, is? It's hydrogen peroxide in a more greasy form. Right. Yeah. yeah okay. So uh, I, I I had to put them in twice a day. Yeah. For about two days. Yeah. And yesterday, I went uh, back to Kaiser, and the nurse squirts uh, well, uh, yeah, a yeah. of water. Yeah. Wow, you should have seen what came out well, of I it. know. I had that. They did that to me once uh, when I was a kid, and I had yeah. trouble hearing. So they like, oh, you got some wax in there. So they, they put this stuff in my ear, and it gurgled around for a while. And then the guy took a, a plunger thing, and he like squirts it in my ear. And this boulder comes shooting out, literally a boulder, like with Indiana Jones running ahead of it. That's how big it was. Well, uh, both she and the doctor told me that I didn't have any wax in my left ear. And I said, you know, I don't think so. I said, why don't you squirt something in there and see? I've been putting the drops in. And sure enough, a boulder came out of there, too. Yeah, it's like a big chunk. Yeah. Yeah, they know how to do it right. I've, I've tried to take squirters and put them in there after doing the hydrogen peroxide, and it doesn't seem to ever kind of come out like that. But I, I do get rid of most of it just by using the high, uh, ammonium, per, ammonium, per, ammonium, per, ammonium, per, oh, forget it, peroxide. Yeah, well, it's probably per, the shit that I used. Yeah, it's peroxide, <laughs> same thing. Yeah, that's yeah. all they use. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's how they so take care. I, of it. I haven't had that done in fifteen or twenty years, so uh, you know I'm I'm going to go in once a year. Let them do it. It's free. Yeah, sure. And it's fun to watch that boulder come flying out of your ear. You know. Uh, Absolutely. Well, I do the thing they say never you do. I stick a Q-tip in my ear. Yeah. And swirl it around. Then this big gunk comes out. The best time to do is when you first wake up in the morning because for some reason your head is hot or something. Yeah. And and you get like a big chunk of this stuff. I'm just so proud of it when I get a large chunk of it. I want to show it to everybody, you know. <laughs> well, uh, that ear gene will actually soften your ears. Mm -hmm. It's it's for ear hygiene, but it stops the itching. Yeah. Uh, for instance, see, I have these uh, custom-made uh, ear, uh, things. Yeah. And I'm going to, uh, have these, uh, etymotics, uh, fit and then yeah. glued into them. Yeah. So that, 
uh, they're much more comfortable than it, the, when, when he's talking about etymotics, he's talking about the earphones that we're using here. And what's, what's nice about them, I'll tell you, that I love about them is they get this little like spongy thing. It's uh, and you like squeeze it down and then you put it in your ear and then it expands and then right. everything around you is pretty silent. You know, and you're getting nothing but the pure sound. Now, they have another version of this that you can actually stick in your ear. Not that thing, but they have some you can actually stick in the ear canal, which I don't trust, but I got it in there once, and they do sound really good. But then, though, these things cost uh, about 79 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want the more expensive ones, there are more expensive ones. But I think you don't these have. were 99 uh, They depends, they, they, on, they, depends on when you buy them. Monitors. I didn't get yeah. the monitors after you advised me against it. Yeah, but then I went and got these, which is a Bluetooth ear, ear set. Yeah. The sound in this is better than with the Etymotix. The really? bass is deeper. Everything is better. Yeah, mm -hmm. and plus it's, you know, it's uh, Bluetooth. So you can walk around. You can walk, walk around, walk down the street, dance with the phone, sing a song, do some video, yeah. stuff like so that. Where are the usual suspects tonight? I have no fucking idea. I'm giving up on this, you know. I'm giving up on trying to figure out when and if they're ever going to call. It used to be everybody was waiting till the first minute to get on because you could get shut well, out well, if you didn't get on in time, right? Well, uh, you know. And now, now, I mean, we do get, you know, we do get sometimes our full houses and things like that. But, uh, um, you know, everybody's just too used to it. I think I maybe should stop it. And then everybody will miss it. And then I'll come back and everybody go, ooh, Alex is back again. You know, uh, nah, I think there's got to be a better way to, uh, to populate it without uh, breaking the momentum. No, it, it could be a way of populating it. We, um, uh, by the way, you know, last night we ran the first of the three uh, interviews with uh, uh, Jack Garfine. And I, right. put, I, put, I put them up, right? Tons of views. I mean, really, the most views we've gotten for anything. Uh, 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 did you put up all three or just no, one? No, no, I just put up the one. Then I'll uh -huh. put up the next one next week with the show. And then the th four, third one, which is 50 minutes long on the, uh, about two weeks from now. And then at that point, I will put on YouTube, and maybe I'll port it over to Facebook, the full hour and 50-minute interview so that yeah. people just want to turn people on to it or send them over there to watch it, you know, because I think it's, I think it's a great history lesson too. I think it, you know, yeah. but, uh, it was amazing how many people really, uh, really wanted to hear Jack. I mean, I'm very gratified with that. I didn't know how it would go over, you oh, know, you know, uh, that, that's, that's great stuff. Well, I mean, it's an old guy trying to tell stories and not at the peak of his powers to do it. You know what I'm well, saying? I I know a guy that does that every night at, uh, at 10 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as long as we don't have these other guys here, yeah. uh, there's gonna... stuff going on today. Yeah, like what and... stuff? I, I, You know something? I've gotten to the point again where I can't watch news anymore. I just well, can't watch it. Yeah. It's just well, Pompeo. He, he was being interviewed, yeah. uh, and uh, people were trying to get him to uh, fess up to uh, Russian collusion. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he just said, hey, look, you know, I'm here for, uh, for this interview, and, you know, let's stick to the, you know, to the facts. Well, uh, I, did, I tried to watch some of it, but I just, you know, I mean, you know exactly what's going to happen. The Democrats are going to level into him, and the Republicans are going to suck his dick. You know, right. and, and the, the, it's so predictable. You know, you used to have Republican senators who would, like, suddenly be liberals for a couple of minutes and liberals who become Republicans for a couple of minutes. But, you know, that, that doesn't happen any longer. It's like well, only Zuckerberg, you know, huh? uh, on the Zuckerberg uh, deal. Yeah. The Facebook deal. Yeah. Uh, you, you had an equal opportunity. Uh, no, nobody gave him a real uh, free ride. No. Uh, like uh, the Republicans do with a Republican nominee or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, the, the Russians are preparing for war. Well, wait, wait, first of all, do you think they're going to they're going to approve Pompeo? Absolutely. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, why shouldn't they? Because he's they a dickhead. <laughs> well, no, he, he's... I he's think that's a good reason definitely. for people not to get there. I'm sorry we have to deny you being Secretary of State because you're a dickhead. Well, why would you think he's a dickhead? He's a dickhead. 
anybody that Trump would like is a dickhead in well, my book. Trump would like me, so I guess that's yeah, you're, Well, I didn't say you weren't a dickhead. Yeah. And now um, that I finally got the computer here, you are a dickhead, okay? So. <laughs> oh, I, I, you didn't know about the virus I put in it. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. <laughs> We might get another caller here. I noticed that Tony has just signed on. Oh, yeah. Tony's been driving me crazy today. I finally really? told him he's one he's one tweet away from ba being banned. Okay, again. wait a minute. Here he is. Here he is. You can tell him yourself. Well, uh, I did. <laughs> uh, 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 hey, Tony? Tony, are you there? Oh, here are you. Yeah, I understand you're one, uh, you're one message away from being banned from Facebook. Yeah, by, by he's Trump. right. I, I, go, I get carried away. I'm going to be very... Uh, I have to just... Whenever you do it, I just... I uh, shut you down fast. Yeah, you got to take a note from Alex. Just don't... It, bang it. Yeah, but why, why do you send these... these you ins know what it is? Insanely inane is. Facebook messages. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is, Alex. Yeah. It's my job. I hate it. <laughs> well, I know, I, it's, you, I know it's your job and you hate it. Event. And you hate it. But, you know, if you're going to send me something... Yeah, that's send good. Send me something. Yeah, because I can't. Uh, by the way, don't don't do what Phil does. Phil sends me endless videos. Oh, I like the videos though. Some of them are okay. No, but that's when you the cops beating somebody up. <laughs> what 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 would you say? What uh, that? Who? What did you say, Phil? I Go ahead, Phil. Chinese people. Uh, what I sent you was my buddy Stony. He just yeah, that was good, Phil. I liked it. Yeah, he's got like six hundred thousand views already. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it, so he did the photography and uh, and directed. Yeah. And uh, there's some local comedian, uh, the Greek guy. He's uh, Tony. Uh, Stoney's a friend of his. And uh, that's that's the one I sent you. And I and I asked you, I said, did I already send this to you? You know, he's, well, I don't like, you know, I don't have time for those things. The pizza thing. It was great. You know, I, I enjoyed it, Phil. I got kicked out of every work. I yeah, well, you guys me. got nothing. You got guys. You guys got nothing to do. Okay. Well, it's true. First of all, first of all, you, you know, first of all, you know, Phil's just trying to sell some fucking carpet all day. How boring is that? I made seven right? cases today. And, and, and you made seven hat cases today. Story. This yeah. is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, anybody so, out there have exciting lives? Oh, I, th I see Jeff Stein signing on, so uh, we'll probably hear from Jeff in a moment, and he can tell us maybe really something exciting has happened in his life. You know what? I couldn't. You know, I I did not like. I was watching the uh, the Facebook thing. I I Ted Cruz really made me sick. Some of those questions. Really? Asked. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me answer the. Uh, the Skype here. That's uh, there. Here comes Jeff. You, 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 you hated what the uh, Ted Cruz. I, I just didn't like the line of questioning. Oh, you mean that. we went to to uh, to uh, on the Facebook deal, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, that uh, the, all those guys were idiots. Every single one of them. None of them knew what they were talking about. Some of them didn't even know what it, they used words they thought were hip, you know. And their uh, their assistants probably wrote up what they said. But if you after they said it, if you were to like nail them and say, okay, now tell me what you just said, they would not be able to tell you what it is they just said. You know, uh, well, somebody, it, was, it was something about uh, social interaction with other people. Uh, that was their, uh, you know, I mean. It's, it's like one lady basically, X, I don't know the, the exact question. She basically told me you don't have enough black people working in Facebook. Well, like, so yeah, everybody had their own little axe to grind. And the fact was, it's you know, so uh, to begin it's with, this this like whole the, they were the Republicans were trying to make a big deal about, oh, well, Facebook is so liberal that they won't let yeah. conservatives say anything. That's bullshit. That's absolute fucking bullshit. Well, it is. I mean, they took down uh, the two black. Gals they took down the two them. black women because they were doing something that contravened the rules and regulations that had nothing to do with their politics of of Facebook. You know, it it it, it was not mean spirited. I, I I don't. I saw it once, and I think they took it down. Uh, but it, it just didn't. Um, it wasn't a positive, upbeat message, but it wasn't anything that I think that they should have been censored for. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what it was or whatever, but there are things that you know send up red flags to 
Facebook yeah. that amount to either bullying or fake news or whatever, and they get a bit sensitive about that. But, you know, to bring up these two fucking women who have been, like, yelling and screaming about it to anybody that will listen, even though they're on YouTube as well, okay, and they are not being, haven't been kicked off there, they, uh, they, they, you know, have been yelling and screaming about this. This is only two women. This isn't the whole conservative movement in the country that they've suddenly had a jihad against and won't let use the face or use Facebook. Yeah, I, I don't know. If and do they think they're that important? These two they people? Would, like, they would. Listen, they listen. listen if Facebook, if Facebook has in their roles dead people, yeah. which we know they have, okay? Because yeah. I have a friend, Steve Gruberg, who died four years ago, and he's still on Facebook. Okay. Well, you know, don't take down the then, dead people. Then they're not going to get rid of conservatives. Okay. They're going to take anything that breathes well, or doesn't I don't breathe. Think he's got bigger things to do with Michael Burry to worry about who's Maybelline and the other lady. They're taking this also. He's like, listen, I don't want how much money. Do I really care about these two he, people? As he sat there, because of his answers, his stock went up $3 billion. Yeah, that was well, I don't know if this is legitimate. It's from a site called Think Progress, but it says Diamond and Silk's Facebook censorship team yeah. is a hoax. Really? What, yeah. what, 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 what does it say? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What does it say? Uh, it says on Tuesday and Wednesday, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg came to Washington and testified for the first time in front of two congressional committees. Mm -hmm. for a unique opportunity. Let me get uh, down to the meat of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it said, instead, many of the Republicans focused on Diamond and Silk. Uh, <coughs> Diamond and Silk, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, frequent guests. Uh, you know, they make it so shitty to try to read something, yeah. uh, you know, it, by, with all the commercials in between. Yeah. Um, beginning in September... <laughs> They claim Ted Cruz, that, you're right, Alex. Ted Cruz is making it sound like well, what, he had, he what, had what, a well, let, let Phil try and make some sense out of oh, this. Out of yeah. this. So, uh, they they claim since September that there was a bias and censorship discrimination against the uh, BNS brand. Uh, they claim that their page was being discriminated against uh, and of their political views as a result, uh, that they were reaching fewer people. Well, we know that one woman uh, went to San Bruno and she was reaching fewer people and she was pissed. But yeah, uh, uh, Think Progress examined the Facebook data and their page and its performance, and the numbers clearly show that this claim is totally without merit. Well, I don't know. I don't see it. Well, wait a minute. What, what are their names again? Uh, of who? The Diamond and Silk? Diamond and Silk? Uh, that can't even be the real name. Let me see here. Well, their real names well, wait are... A uh, oh, wait a minute. Linda Diamond Parkway. and Silk, Facebook, okay. Uh, so I'm... Oh, I, I'm uh, here, here's Diamond and Silk, and they're up. Oh, there you go. There they are. They're there. Yeah. Well, so he's that, not doing anything wrong. I didn't even think he knew who they, who they were when they yeah. mentioned him. He's like, What? <laughs> Okay, so there's something called Out Triangle Social Media Analytics platform owned by Facebook. Yeah. That showed the total interactions on the Diamond and Silk Facebook page were steady. So uh, I guess they, they were claiming that they were throttled back. And uh, the. They uh, got 50, they got a, a 1, 546 million people watching them, following them. Yeah. Wow. You know. I've got three, okay? <laughs> you know, fuck you, Diamond and Silk. You know. <laughs> and, 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 but, and, and, you know, I would think that that whole number would have gone back to zero if they had taken their account off. Yeah. So um, I don't think their account was even off. No, it doesn't, doesn't look like it according to the analytics that uh, Facebook says that they use to uh, determine what was going on. And here's uh, Senator Ted Cruz claimed that Facebook had blocked Trump supporters and Diamond and Silk's page with 1.2 face, million Facebook followers. Uh, it, it says here, uh, this is their latest tweet, their latest Facebook thing, and yeah. it's them saying the following, and it was posted one hour ago. If you're experiencing mm -hmm. censorship on social media platforms, please tell us your story. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, well, evidently we can tell you because you're not being blocked. <laughs> but yeah. you said that their content was unsafe. You know, I can't oh. imagine how... Even like he said, Alex, he can I, take down... Well, I, I have no idea. You know, if I had seen it, I could tell you what they what they meant by that. But uh, apparently there was some reason why they felt they needed to take it off. But, you no, know, I, these women I, I, aren't really... 
uh, 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 conservatives. They're like uh, Trump clown hats. You know, yeah. there are two women who've yeah. been acting goofy about Trump ever since he started running. In fact, they were, they, they, uh, uh, Ted Cruz said, and these people don't get any publicity, or whoever brought it up, they don't get any publicity. I saw them on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah, well, they they learned how to move their head from Oprah Winfrey, you know, from, uh, you yeah. Know, it's, it's yeah. Not yeah. Just, one of the other ones the other one thing, but. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, you know, I just I I I I just found I found the whole thing yesterday just absolutely, um, uh, how can I put it, just off-putting because these guys were so idiotic they didn't know what they were fucking talking about. Yeah, so Jeff, have you ever seen Diamond and Silk? No, no, no not at all. Yeah. all right. uh, but I, I did listen to part of it yesterday, and I noticed that a lot of people were asking questions. And nobody even knew what the question was about. I was trying to figure it out. Like, what the fuck is he talking? Well, about? you know, I mean, look, you could take, you could, you, you, you could, you could take, um, you could take, uh, um, what's his name, the guy from Facebook, and inter and interchange him with somebody from, say, uh, where do you call it? Uh, not Facebook, but uh, Twitter or YouTube, and ask them the same question. And you would get approximately the same answers. All right? So, uh, uh, really, that was a useless thing yesterday. Absolutely useless. It was only a positive thing for, uh, what's his name? I keep, I forgot his name offhand. Oh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. It was, a, it was a great thing for Zuckerberg because, as I say, he earns $3 million while he sat there excusing the whole thing. And America felt that what he had to say, at least they were saying it with their money, uh, made sense to them. So uh, no harm, no foul. You know? I don't know if, uh, will, if playing, will playing Diamond and Silk uh, create a, um, uh, a deal for you that might get you I have no idea. You know, well, I don't think I would have trouble on on YouTube. I, I don't think so. But Let's see if this is this is the one. What? Uh, put it in front of your microphone. There you go. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Wait a minute, hold on a second, stop it a second. The other woman doesn't say anything, right? She just goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the other one doing the ranting. Right, the other one. What are you worried about? I don't know. The other one's going, yeah. What the, what the, what the fuck am I, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck am I doing wrong? Okay, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. The woman who goes into, into, into YouTube and shoots up the place uh, it had 11,000 uh, no 11, people anymore. They're talking about these two. Yeah, about 11,000. 11,000 followers. What, what do I have to do? You know? You, you got don't even talk about anything. Place up. No, I, 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 Phil, maybe it should just be you and I, and I'll go and I'll yell and scream, and you'll keep going. Yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right, girl. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't move. You need a camera on in the store. Uh, that would no. be good. You need that upper cervical chiropractor. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have a problem with that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Uh, I, I was doing too much of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I just felt that the whole Zuckerberg thing, it just it just so put me off. And it's just this whole thing about, I, you know, whether I'm watching Fox or I'm watching MSNBC, it's all the same goddamn format. Well, I it's thought just he did a good job. It's just they're bashing from a different direction. That's all. What? I thought he did a good job of defending himself. 
And uh, except that he at some point should have said, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And when you get it, go out, get an education, come back and ask me questions and maybe I can answer them. But don't ask me a bunch of hypotheticals that have no sense in the real world. You well, know. that's the same thing they were asking Pompeo today was a bunch of hypotheticals. Well, I mean, again, with Pompeo, I would imagine what was happening is all the Democrats there were out to nail him and all the Republicans there were out to suck his dick. And I got a, and, a, and since that's so entirely predictable, why should I watch it? And the main reason why those senators and congressmen act the way they do is because they know this is going to seem be seen back home and it's an election year and they want people to see them, you know, yeah. so they get tough with with uh, with the head of Facebook, you know, oh, wow. See how I took him to the woodshed? Yes, vote oh, yeah. for me. You know, fuck <laughs> you. This is all, uh, these, these, these committees that they hold, these hearings they hold, are total waste of time. Nothing ever happens as a result. Yeah. You know, well, it's just a they, big, it's a big dog and pony show. So they can go back to their, uh, to their districts and say, hey, look what I did. See how I, I talked to the guy at Facebook and I made him squirm, folks. Well, vote for me. Know, you know what the interesting thing that Republicans are saying right now yeah. is that Republicans can't run on fiscal re responsibility anymore because uh, what they, fiscal they, responsibility? Right, because they just raised it uh, one and a half trillion dollars or two trillion dollars the, the debt. Yeah, uh, they can't run on ending Obamacare because they didn't they didn't eliminate it when they had the when they had the chance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I got a feeling the Republicans are going to get trounced because they don't have any platform to run on. They nothing. You know, the, the Republicans don't have any platform to run on. But it, and, and they've got it. What they're really going to have to do is run against the uh, the Trumpism in this country. They, you know, they're they're being. Uh, because Trump is winning the uh, the battle for hearts and minds, if you can believe that. Uh, no, he's not. How is he winning it? With a with well, with a, with a thirty eight percent approval rating, well, that's uh, but it's it's a lot higher with Republicans. Well, yeah, with Republicans, but you know, it's, it should it no, it should be a hundred percent with Republicans, but it isn't. And Republicans do not represent the majority of voters in this country. You've got no. to get those people that are in the middle who swing either way, depending upon the win, to vote. For your candidate, we we know the Republicans are going to vote for the Republican. We know the Democrats are going to vote for the Democrats, but it's that I don't know thirty, forty percent, twenty percent. I don't know how big the percentage is in the middle that makes the difference. And those are the guy. Those are the guys you set out to convince. You don't have to convince if the Republicans. If he Syria, yeah, and uh, and and does a, a couple of other things. You know what else is going on? You got the Syrian attacks. Well, he's uh, not going to do this alone. No, I, France is in his, is is with him. No, England's well, no, no. They, oh, yeah, they, but yeah, but I'm saying that he's not doing this alone. So if huh. it's a total failure, he's going to make them take the blame for it, not himself. Smart guy. Yeah, of <laughs> course, of course. But I, I don't feel he's competent to make these decisions. I think maybe Mattis is, you know, yeah. maybe uh, some of the people around him are. But ultimately, he has to make the final decision, and I don't trust that he's going to make the right one. Oh, we'll see. I mean, I, last you know, time, I last time, what did he do? Attack. He went and he shot up a base, right? And didn't kill anybody, and didn't put and and the planes were flying in and out the next day, right, from yep. the air base, and they couldn't hit this one particular hangar where they knew the poison gas might be because they didn't want to get the poison gas in the air by exploding it. So well, you know, again, is this going to be another one of those cluster fucks like the last time? Well, probably because they're they're saying that they don't want to bomb Assad. You know that they could they could put a tomahawk missile down his uh, uh, stovepipe mm -hmm. and uh, and and rock his world, but they're not going to do that. Um, and you know, uh, isn't it I, amazing I, though? Isn't it amazing, Phil? Doesn't this bother you a little bit mm -hmm. that if you're a, if you're a big country and Syria is a bigger country than say a lot of others, they will mm -hmm. think twice about bombing you. Your protection is just your position in the world. But if you're a smaller country, we'll blow you all to shit and not even think twice about it. Well, uh, which country did they blow to shit? Well, no, I'm saying that little countries do not have that, uh, are not afforded that same protection. Uh, I think but Kim Jong Un is not getting that kind of protection. Uh, I don't think Kim Jong Un's getting that kind of protection at all. 
Well, he, you know, he's got his own bombs, and uh, now you well, know, now now he says, well, he says he's willing to discuss doing away with 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 nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. That means all y'all with all your weapons get the fuck out of here. And don't build your nukes. Then I won't build mine. Well, that's fair. Yeah, I think it's very fair. I think the sanest one of those two happens not to be Trump. It happens to be Kim Jong Un, a fat yeah. guy with a oh. with a mo haircut. I, you know, I have a short memory, huh? I think you have a short memory. I think Kim Jong Un has made cyber attacks on on us and, of course, Sony. Uh, he's uh, launched missiles over. We Japan. only assume that he did Sony. There's never been any proof to the uh, that he did do Sony. We assumed he did Sony because of that movie. I don't know right. if that's exactly true. I don't know that he exactly has the brain power to do that kind of mischief. Okay. Hey, if he can make a nuclear bomb. Now, you now the Chinese can make that kind of mischief. They're very good at it. You know, yeah. and the Russians are very good at it. But Kim Jong Un, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he. You know, the people, people who are really hungry. Don't make good coders. You know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, he feeds a few of them. You know, the ones that are there to push the button. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I think Kim Jong Un got exactly what he wanted out of his whole whole thing. He wanted recognition and people to pay attention to him. Right. Well, you know. Uh, I, and if he lives in peace with his southern neighbors, well, what's wrong with that? Yeah. You know. Uh, I I'd like to see that, and I'd like to see us as a country get the hell off the Korean Peninsula and let them police their own deals. Well, you know, you know maybe they will. You know. And that's Trump's position. But now he's talking about entertaining the TTP again. Uh, he's uh, entertaining. Uh, well, I mean, uh, he, what do you mean he's entertaining it? Is he, is uh, he's looking back into possibly negotiating uh, a, TTT, a TTP deal with uh, the, the East. Mm -hmm. With the Asian nations. Asian nations, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so he's ordered that, uh, you know, they, they, they look into that. Now, he hasn't decertified uh, Iran yet, and a number of his uh, people that are around him don't want him to. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, if he can negotiate a better deal. Well, well, on one hand, I mean, like with Iran, you know, he doesn't want to talk to them. They won't have anything to do with them. But then he says, we have to talk to Russia because we have to, we have to find a common ground with these people. Well, yeah. then why don't you talk to Iran as well? Isn't, why shouldn't that be your strategy with Iran? Well, it was a strategy with Kim Jong Un, and it seems to have worked. No, Why? his only strategy with Kim Jong Un was to insult him, and the only thing that brought Kim Jong Un around was the Olympics, when the Koreans said, "Sure, we'll even have a team together." You know, they were the yeah. ones who made the peace. The South not, Koreans, you know, really it had nothing. Created to, the solution. Yeah, they it's created the solution. The South Koreans, as well as uh, a lot of the uh, the rest of the Western world, crediting Trump. Or uh, uh, opening. Up I, I haven't heard that they're crediting him. Uh, yeah, they are. Even a lot of people in in uh, in Congress and Senate. Yeah. Uh, is anybody are, are, else going to call us? By the way, tonight is or is it just going to be the three of us? And yeah. you know. <laughs> well, let me turn around. What? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, so, I, Jeff, what you doing? <laughs> what? What did you say to Jeff? That's got going on what do you got going on well Jack? i got doing i'm waiting for the the weather to change yeah i keep waiting for it to change too uh, i i i want that i want that first spring day i'm just waiting for it i think it's tomorrow i think it is tomorrow uh, are you guys you have snow or something what, what's what? going on no the it snow is over no snow's huh. over but it still was like in the 50s today it hasn't hadn't really warmed up and tomorrow, yeah. well, tomorrow, Thursday, oh, this is Thursday, right? 58. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be 76 degrees. Wow. That's wow. the day That's the day to go outside, <laughs> finally. Your sinuses get clogged. Spring is yeah. here. Spring is going to be here tomorrow. So, so all the pollen. I'm, it's, uh, but then I, you know, I want to get out, but then at, at 1.15, I have to do Michael Snyder with his fucking movie reviews, and I won't be able to go out <laughs> and take a walk because I got to listen to that drivel. You know, oh. I've never heard it. Uh, good for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of the more useless things I do. Yeah. You well, know, the show being the second most useless thing I do. So, 
you know, mm-hmm. because people don't call. Do you, are you feeling guilty out there yet? <laughs> I guess not. Well, you can, you always can play diamond and silk. <laughs> or, or or go go shoot up a social media office or something, you know. Uh, hey, be careful. They'll knock you off of YouTube. Yeah, they will. Something. They will. Well, you know, I mean, I, fe- I felt so- really sorry for YouTube in that deal. I mean, really sorry for them because they weren't doing anything. She was imagining these things. You know, she was imagining they throttled her down and things like that, you know? You know, you should feel sorry for the people that got their lunch hour messed up. You know, that, well, those are the- I'm happy that none of them were permanently or were ne- at least I don't think any of them were really permanently. Yeah. In a, no, it's, uh, is that is that last that, guy out of the hospital? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the only person who died was her, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm going to ask you this, Phil, uh, because I, you're, you were a cop. Why yeah. do we go into places like this and then they they shoot for the most vital organ they can find rather than trying to disable the person? If you're going to use deadly force, it's called deadly force. No, but but why use deadly force? Why not uh, try and well, take the person? So Can't you shoot for the legs? I mean, there's a lot of mass of your body that you can hit that isn't going to, you know. No, it's in the movies. It's not going to stop the threat. Uh, if, if you're, if there's an escalation of force policy that every department has. Yeah. Some are a little different than others, but for the most part, they're the same. And it's, if you're in a situation where your life or the life of others are in danger, you go from zero to 60 uh, immediately, and you, you go to deadly force. Now, the thing is, if you're going to stop the threat and you shoot somebody in the leg, that doesn't, sh- that doesn't stop the threat. What stops the threat is two to the chest, one to the brain box. Then the threat is stopped. And, uh, but and I, but isn't doing. isn't that like uh, trying to take a baseball bat when you could use a fly swatter? You know, not at, not at the point that somebody is shooting other people. You don't use the you don't use the fly swatter. All I'm you, saying is that not all circumstances are absolutely alike, and who knows that this woman couldn't have just been taken down? Uh, but no, they it, it, well actually they didn't kill her. She shot herself. Shot herself, but yeah. she shot three people. And, and yes, you're right. She shot herself. So it wasn't the cop that took her down. Uh, and, she, you know, the and I would think I would think I would think in a lot of these cases, you would want to keep the person alive so you can find out why the fuck they did it. So maybe you can prevent it the next time. That's that's true. And they did that with the uh, park uh, with a park side shooter. The, the one in Florida. Yeah. That one, that guy didn't kill himself, and he was captured alive, and they're trying to find out what the story is. But for the most part, these people have taken their own lives, or unless it was the Bonnie and Clyde shootout that happened in San Bernardino. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, that uh, there was, what, hundreds and hundreds of bullets exchanged uh, by both sides. Yeah. And uh, those people weren't going out with without a fight. Yeah. But... You know, I understand what you're saying. Why don't they just uh, wound or, or, or so forth? But the problem is if they wound somebody who is in the act of killing people, that might give them the opportunity to wound or kill one more person. And at that point, you have to stop the threat. And, and if you're all, I, all I'm saying is, is that um, uh, you should be able to do something about that. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you should be able to to lessen the force that you use, dependent upon the situation. I mean, we're we're able to do that. And you know why you're able to do that? Because if all of a sudden the person drops the gun and raises their hand, you don't shoot them. Uh, You know, unless you're that guy in South Carolina. Well, that that doesn't seem to work a lot of the time either. You know? Yeah. Well, there's adrenaline, there's things like that going on. But a cop should be able to be professional enough that if the you know if the perpetrator uh, surrenders, you stop mm-hmm. shooting. Now, yeah. there's other uh, things that you can use uh, if if you have if you don't have to use deadly force. You can use a taser. You can use mace. You can use your baton. Yeah. You, you can uh, use verbal commands. But these things, uh, you you go from those, and yeah. the and the last thing you use is deadly force. I just put me in the middle of your picture. It's a new you, place for me to put my box, right in the middle of the of the uh, of, of the four of you. Really? Yes. It, it, oh, okay. Well, I'm seeing it on Skype, so I don't. Uh, oh yeah, you're seeing it on Skype, but I I just did that. I feel so proud of myself. Hello, Patrick. Hi. 
How you doing? Good. I was just on the Facebook and uh, on the, the Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. What are you, a senator? <laughs> yeah, I, it was funny. I was listening to uh, <laughs> one of my conservative talk show um, today. And she was talking about what happened yesterday. And she said, not one of those people uh, that were interviewing Zuckerberg knew what the hell they were saying. That's exactly what I was saying earlier. Right. And she said, and who was the moron that called it the Facebook? She said, these people, they had no business asking about anything that they were. Somebody you know. said, and I think it was Alex, that the Facebook was the original name. Somebody of, mentioned that, that that was the original name, that it was yeah. called the Facebook. Yeah. Well, yeah. now we're on the Skype, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, by the yeah. way, uh, Patrick, there's going to be a job available come January in your area. Uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ryan is retiring. Oh, yeah, I, I heard you last night. The problem <laughs> is he is not in my district. Oh. He, he just south and west of me. You just roll over. Just roll over. You're on wheels. Yeah. It's easy yeah. for you. <laughs> Marjorie well, does it all the time. Sure. And plus, if Tammy Duckworth can do it, so can you. <laughs> and she had a baby on top of it. Well, I can't have a baby. Oh. You know, I, I don't have the part for that, but. You know. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a while till they figure it out. You can claim. God, I just, I just, have I, baby. all kinds of just absolutely horrible, horrible jokes just came to me about Tammy Duckworth having a baby, but and it has something to do with being up on the table. Okay, you know, uh, with, uh, with no legs. Uh, it, I, it, I don't know. Forget it, folks. I, I, it's one of those bad taste moments in which I'm making a judgment not to do the joke. Yes. I Silk? Pa- Patrick. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, uh, yeah. I um, had three babies. Next, next week and possibly tomorrow, we'll all be Patrick free. Really? Because it's going to be Phil free tomorrow night. I may have to sign this show off at like 25 minutes of 11. Well, I'm, having, I'm having surgery next week, so I, gotta, I won't be around for certain on Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. But how about Thursday night. I, I should be home. Sometime Thursday, but yeah. Well, what, what, what you want when you have surgery for for that? that? Do, do they give you anesthesia for uh, when? No, when they give him a bullet to bite, Phil. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't have any feeling down there. I mean, you know. Yeah, no, they they they're insisting on doing the anesthesia. Yeah. Uh, because it's <laughs> um, And I I mean there's <clears throat> for minor feeling I have. I probably don't want to feel whatever they're going to do. But yeah. that, when they pull the bladder stone out, that wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't feel that. But the kidney, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's going to be like a 20-minute procedure, literally. Wow. 20 minutes, and, you know, it's done. Yeah, so. But, so why aren't you going to be here tomorrow night? Uh, because I may be having somebody come over, a buddy of mine. If that doesn't happen, then I'll be... Oh, okay. I'll well, I just hope I hope more people are participating in the show tomorrow night because Phil isn't going to be here and maybe you're not going to be here. Uh, I'm mm. losing everybody to, like, pho- photography yeah. and ailments. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to a uh, lecture on uh, diving in the Falklands. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a guy who, uh, National Geographic guy, and he uh, did a lot of diving in the Falklands. Do they Island. charge for that? No, no, I, I'm a club member. Oh. And Diving so. in the Falklands. Well, that's, that's one I'd take a pass on. But, you know, go have fun. Go have well, fun. Well, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather just between you and me have bladder surgery. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I understand. Be- believe me, I was just talking to a guy tonight. And uh, in in uh, Isla Madora, which is uh, the one key south of Key Largo, mm-hmm. and he said the weather is beautiful. And he was asking me about my operation, and I told him about the, you know wearing the diaper and things like that. Yeah, I said, oh, I wish I was down there because I could pee in my wetsuit. And, yes, you could. You know, <laughs> well, I'm, I bet you have peed in your wetsuit all the time. 
It, it, you know, there's a reaction that happens when you get into when you the hit water, water, cold water. Of course, how many of how many how many of us just be honest have peed in the pool? Okay, oh, every okay. one of us, right? You yeah. hit the water, and all yeah. of a sudden there's that urge to pee. That's why there's chlorine in it. I used to know the name of what's whatever. in the ocean. Yeah, there, there's a name for that uh, uh, phenomenon that happens when you when you get into the water, and it's you called have to peeing poop. your pants. Yeah, really. No, no. There's an actual, <laughs> there's an actual name for it. But uh, uh, yeah, and, and you know, the one thing you can't pee in is a dry suit. But uh, now that I'm getting used to these diapers and pads and things like that, I'm never going to have to worry about wearing my dry suit again. I just put the pad in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's that sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. The reason they call it a dry suit is supposed to be dry. Uh, so there are no depends at, uh, at Costco, you say? No mail depends. No mail depends. Uh, I'm sure the they. I'm sure Costco. they must must just be out of them. No, no, no. Faye asked them because uh, I sent her there to get them, and she and they told her that they're not carrying those any uh, mail uh, diapers anymore. Why? She didn't get that far. Well, I mean, come on. Don't guys piss their pants as much as women do? I know I do. <laughs> yeah. But, well, you'll you'll get that'll get better as time goes yeah. on. It, 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 it's getting better as Let me uh, let me ask Patrick this. Patrick, the yeah. operation they're going to do is there a chance they'll fuck up the operation and you'll be able to walk again? Oh, stop. I mean, that's good if they did. Yeah. I I always I only do a tease that um with the doctor that you know, make sure you do the right thing, because otherwise I could get off this table walking, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing that I always do say is, you know how they always ask you, um, how are you doing this morning, you know. Yeah. And I always say to them, don't worry about me. I just want to know, did you get enough sleep? Did you get laid? Did you have a good breakfast? That's all I want to know. Did you not have an argument with your wife? Right. Yeah, you, you know, know, you don't want you don't want a doctor working on that part of your body who's pissed. You know, you don't ask if uh, will I be able to play the piano after this operation? Well, I'll tell you what, my <laughs> my particular urologist. I didn't play it before. <laughs> See, that's yeah, that's the joke. I never my particular I urologist, she could probably make me walk if she if she wanted to have sex with me. I mean, she's like a nine and a half. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So I uh, yeah. Hey, you know the the one who shamed me for uh, 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 for the uh, uh, prostatectomy, uh, she was a nine and a half too, you know. Uh, but the ones that they send into the room after, yeah, they would have to pay money to be a one. <laughs> Look, Tony's turned into a dog. Oh. Well, there he is. What, what are you doing on the ground? Giving your dog a blowjob? What's no, going she, on down there? She dropped some underneath my thing here, and she's crying for it. It's just a piece of paper. What was she doing under your thing? Well, I got this under the thing to her bone. It's yeah? Like what, oh, is that a euphemism for something? Um, There's nothing there. My back is getting stiff here. Wait. Oh, she's this, got is, a this is really interesting TV, ain't it, folks? She's got a met bike, if you can see. Although this isn't yeah, TV, this like, this is this is the internet where I all, got this at uh, Shea at City Field when he gave it away, but I gave it to Coco. She's yeah. almighty. Sorry, did you put on a hole on him? She's got a blanket. She's showing it. Yeah. I'm yeah. ready to wear a bed. Go lay down. So uh, let me see here. So anyway. Um, by the way, I want to thank everybody who's been watching uh, the interview last night with Jack or that episode because it's really sure. – we've gotten a lot of people watching it. Uh, uh, yeah, I was just watching it, it again today. It, it'll be back on – we'll have the next one on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I was kind of worried that the first couple weren't going to be as interesting as the last one, but everybody really loved this first one. So if you like the first one, the second one gets better, and the third one it's just – I let it go for 50 minutes because it was just so – Amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. But like I wrote to you last night, um, what I did like, and, and I know you had kind of apologized for it right after the interview, is I like 
the fact that you had to kind of prod him and rephrase question because it made it more authentic for his age and at that age your thinking that there's some wistfulness and some thinking that's going on mm-hmm. to memory and and it made it more authentic than let's say if it would have been 20 or 30 years ago even though the interview may have seemed better for you this reminded me of when I was interviewing my grandfather before he passed, when I was making the book for yeah. him about his World War II service. So yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I enjoyed the little hiccup that you had where you had to repeat the question. It just made it real. You know? Well, no, I mean, it, it, it was in one respect, it's one of the hardest interviews I've ever done because... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, as an interviewer, you have to listen, you have to keep on top of things and you have to try and keep it moving forward. And, and here I've got a guy who's 87 and he's, his thinking is, is it's not muddled. I mean, he's, it's, it's, it's still very vibrant and alive, but he tends to go off onto tangents, you know, like, and as I was telling my students in Paris, blah, 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 you know, it, it, uh, I had to keep that road straight ahead, you know. And for the next episode, I keep going. Well, let's keep moving forward. Let's. What I want to do is get closer to Auschwitz, so we can talk about that. You know. Uh, what about the. Uh, are you going to do another set of interviews on the second part of his life? I want to. I'm having. Yeah. Uh, I'm having lunch with him on uh, Sunday. Uh, mm. I want to do that. Uh, it's just a matter of when, and and how. And he has not been that well lately. I'm, I was lucky to get him for this. He was not feeling well that day. Uh, and uh, yet he opened up to me, which I really appreciate. Um, but in some ways, I felt, you know, I felt bad about it at times, too. I didn't want to prod him too much on stuff, you know. When he started crying, when he started talking about his, do- his sister, his nine-year-old sister, saying that, you know, I, she wouldn't, she wouldn't uh, deny who she was because I would rather die a Jew than not to admit that I am one, you know. Uh, when he said that and he started crying about it, I just, you know, it's, you, you can't help but, but f- feel something about that, you know. You know, that uh, reminds me of the uh, Spanish Jews uh, that uh, during the Inquisition, uh, they, they hid in the caves, they practiced uh, their Judaism in, in private, mm-hmm. and uh, they, I think they called them Moranos? Or, uh, I don't know. It was a word for uh, uh, those Jews that practice in private, and then many of them. Well, in Spain, uh, you had the Inquisition, and they yeah. were, they would take people like Jews and make them say they believed in Christ, and many of them wouldn't. I mean, that's what they tortured them. I think them about. you're you're correct that they're Moranos. Yeah. Moranos. Yes, if, I uh, t- uh, Tony. I have to cut you off because she's got to go outside again. Oh, I only got four people, and you have to go because Sorry. your fucking she's dog has to take a leak. Room. She's going to do potty on the floor if I don't take her. Oh, okay. That's, okay. That'll be I'll interesting. I'll tomorrow night. I'll call back tomorrow. Oh, okay. Please. You'll maybe be the only one. Boy, will that be a great right. show. Yeah, it works out. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Jeff, you've got to guarantee me you're going to call tomorrow night. Right? I'll pick. Okay. It's the only way he'll get a word in edgewise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we lost, Tony. we lost Tony. He's taking his dog out for a leak. Which, by the way, let me ask you this, Phil. And I don't, If this is too embarrassing a question, tell me to go fuck myself. Uh, go fuck yourself, but uh, ask. <laughs> in all these nights since you've gotten home from the hospital and we're yeah. doing this show, and yeah. you're obviously wearing the diaper, right? Yeah. Have you taken a piss while we've been on the air? No. Uh, I have uh, been able to hold. Uh, now, occasionally during the day there's a leak because I have to change out the pad a couple of times. Yeah. You know, so I, I might turn the wrong way or something and there's a little bit of a leak, but, uh, uh I, I got a really good stream before the show and, uh, I, I should be fine. Isn't that wonderful now? You don't have that prostate anymore. How, how fluid there you are and how, uh, strong the stream is. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, it, it's not always uh, as strong as I'd like. I, I know this isn't what you tuned in to hear, but the numbers just went up. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I don't All of a sudden, they go the up. Numbers. A couple more people are listening because I'm asking you whether you pee your pants while I'm doing the show. 
<laughs> sure, I pee my pants. You know, it's just <clears throat> a funny show. <laughs> yeah, and and of course I don't have to ask that of Patrick because he he just casts when when he needs to, right? Yeah. yeah. Right now, for the last three weeks, I've been having issues because of the bladder stone that mm. keep bouncing around and make the bladder spasm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of old so game, that, of, uh, kind of like a little game of pong going on in there. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> it, that's exactly what it is, Alex. If, yeah. if I move, if like I clean my place every Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it requires a lot of reaching and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I've got to wear, essentially, it's called a chuck. And it, 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 it what they put on a bed, um, whenever you go in the hospital in case you were to mess yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've got chucks here from years ago, and I cut them up, and I put one over myself, and then do my cleaning, because invariably I'm gonna piss a little bit here and there, yeah. so it becomes a real pain in the dick to do that. Well, right? we've, been, we've been joined by John Rockwell. Hello, John. How are you? We haven't hey. heard from you in a while. Well, I saw you were you lost. A, you lost. A, I just got on. And I saw you lost a person. It's like okay, it's time for me to come on and, and say hello. Yeah. Well, why haven't you? A couple you weeks. Uh, what are you? And pissed? you're talking about medical stuff. I had a nice little medical emergency, oh, and really? I'm, I'm good. What was your medical uh, emergency? Heart my my heart flutter came back, but I caught it. And they, I was only in the hospital for a day and a half. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, this time, before the medicine helped, this time they, they kept me overnight and not let me eat <laughs> until about 3 in the afternoon. And then did a, uh, they did an electroshock on me. Right. And but I'll tell you, it did the trick. It was amazing. Well, wait, wait, you, was you need like, a, you need oh, it, was a, it was a defibrillator, right? The defib well, yeah. it's a smaller. It's not, the, it's, not like, well, it's not like the ones you get. You know, at your local at your local restaurant, like, nobody you know, nobody's yelling. It's on really there. they put a pad here and they put a pad in the back, and I asked them, "Is it the same sort of level of of intensity as the ones that you use for emergencies?" Said, no, but it's not very comfortable, so we knock you it, out. It's, it, no, it's just to get your heart into rhythm, if I'm not mistaken. Back in the rhythm, yeah. I was doing I was doing like 100, 140, boom, 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 Ooh. boom. boom, 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 boom. Boom. for about three days i'm like this is not good it's not going down so they put me on the, the medicine that's what she Northern said uh that, that helped me before and that got me down to like 120 that's still not good <laughs> it was like that's boom 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 yeah. boom yeah it was yeah, yeah. Boom, boom 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 you know whatever and and what's so, what's your rhythm right now boom 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 70, 80, uh, something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That you way, know, my two latest two problem is I have I have hand problems. I get cramps. Two, week, two I, weeks ago, two weeks ago today, yeah. I was I was let out of the hospital. I went oh, in on really? Wednesday night, and they didn't do the they didn't do the zapping until uh, until Thursday afternoon, which is you know unfortunately they didn't want you to eat, which is the thing that I was more hungry than anything else. Yeah, yeah. John, that, that was a good tune, but I don't know if you can dance to it. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Well, well, you know, I've, I've got a problem. It was sort of a disc. It was a disco beat about 120, 140. You know, I'm getting you know, a lot of cramps. I'm getting a lot of cramps in my fingers lately. Need more water. You think that's it? Yeah. Uh, also be, cramping yeah. in my uh, legs. Hydrate. Cramps. hydrate. Maybe, maybe. Well, uh, no, I'm taking magnesium and stuff, but maybe I need to drink water. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, water or some good liquid yeah. that's not. Hey, not, we've been jo we've been joined by we've tonight. been joined by uh, Tim. I guess I got to put my face back in. Uh, in a, in, a, in a normal place. I like you in the middle there. That was sort of interesting. Yeah, but the now now we got uh, we got. I'm in the corner somewhere, and you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now, whatever. Now well, you know, since Tim's on the phone. Why can't you make him small and make yours large? Yeah, make, no, make, I can't. Make I can't. I, I don't belong in the circle of trust. No, I don't. We can't make him small. It's just a big blue square with a telephone because Tim calls on the phone. If we ever saw Tim and what he looked like, we'd all be disappointed. I'm in the witness <laughs> protection program, Alex. Please don't. Exactly. Yeah, I, of course, I imagine you are. Uh, 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 you know, I've seen Tim on Facebook, and he and he looks like uh, a thinner version of Mike Pompeo. <laughs> really? Well, okay, actually, I saw I, him I, today. Yeah. I, I prefer Elton John. <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely. I I prefer Elton John. <laughs> How much yeah, do you I prefer look, Elton John? I've been told I look somewhat like. Uh, some somewhat like uh, Jerry Garcia, actually. <laughs> Not really. I'm trying to think. You do look like something like I Phil. Know, but my, yeah. my my photo for my uh, senior half price Metro card looks a lot like Jerry Garcia. Oh, really? Oh, have, okay. you all, have you all bought my new book on Amazon? 
Oh, you have a book? Yeah, The Doorman Cometh. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. You know, that's the most current. It's, sh- it's, it's shocking, just shocking, shocking. What's shocking? The latest. Did you see, did you hear about that? No, no. The, no. the doorman the door. that says that he has some sort oh, of oh yes. some sort of uh, crap about or some sort of weird. No, he was paid thirty thousand dollars illegal or 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 having a baby or something with somebody in in his building. No, 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 wait a minute. Didn't I hear about somebody, some doorman who was getting paid $30,000 by Trump not to talk about something, but we don't know what it is because he took the $30,000? Hey, that's that's standard tip at Trump Tower. Exactly. Give me 30 grand. I won't talk about anything. Uh, Believe me. (laughs) That's that's nothing like the skeleton they dug up with Scooter Libby. Well, yeah. Scooter Libby. Remember Scooter Scooter Libby. (laughs) <laughs> he, he did a practice pardon. He, he's in the bullpen. <laughs> this part somebody that lied to the CIA and the FBI. It's not a thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I gotta tell you though, Alex. I gotta tell you though. The one, the one thing I really liked about being, or I thought was great about being in that whole hospital thing, is that the drug they gave me to knock me out. Is the same one that killed Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, well, no, that's <laughs> uh, but they use it. They, it's, they, it's, they, it's the amnesia they, drug. They gave it to me, and I literally they said, "You're going to see a little tired." I don't really feel tired. We're done. I'm like, <laughs> what? Well, no, no, propofol like, is wonderful. I mean, I do that with propofol. Hey, all, tell me if yeah. I'm tell me if I'm not wrong. The great thing about propofol is just before you go out, just seconds yeah. before you go out, there is this wonderful rush. I don't. I, that I, I, know that, get. I don't remember it. That's a problem. My I wife. My it. wife loves to get operated like on to have a because she lives for that. Rush. <laughs> she lives for they, that. They laid me down on the table. They moved me across to another table, yeah. and I don't remember a thing after I woke up. Exactly. In the, exactly. The, exactly. That's it. Yeah, except yeah, you. Except you. Except you, except you felt your back pocket and somebody had stolen your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really. <laughs> yes. That's uh, what they do for colon, colonoscopies. Is yeah, well, that's what I've, when I've okay, had it, yeah, when right. I've had it, yeah. And uh, I, had one, I had a colonoscopy where I could actually watch the, they had the they had the video thing. I could watch it. It was like, this is John's colon. You know? Was that, and no, I, was no, I had it, a, yep. I had a cystos, not a cystoscopy. <clears throat> What's the other one that you get? It's, it's, the, no, it's the lower part of uh, the intestine. Sigmoidoscopy. Sigmoidoscopy. Sigmoid, yeah. And that I saw, I saw my, they said, do you want to yeah. see it? And I said, not particularly. You know, but I watched it anyway because well, it was fascinating. Yeah. I like science. It, it, yeah, it it's was like the it, fa- fantastic voyage. But uh, but well, colonoscopies, exactly. you don't want to be awake to see that happening. Hey, you know. He's got his hand up. Yes, uh, Patrick. Oh yeah, camera. Oh, Pat- well, I, I, you know the problem. The problem with propofol. That's what killed Joan Rivers, isn't it? No, I think no. Might, what, well, I mean, it might have helped. No, <laughs> something. Well, what happened is you could you could have these procedures at a non-hospital setting. Like just yeah. a satellite building, right? That's how you have. And my they don't have all their emergency procedures handy, right. and they get well. They I, get I, I, haven't you heard the story I tell Tim about how uh, my wife went I, uh, down to a place to have a, uh, I think it was it wasn't a colonoscopy, it was something else. They were looking at something. I think oh, it was a, a endoscopy going down yeah. the throat. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. and my wife uh, which too. is about the same thing I think they were doing with Joan Rivers because they were looking for some polyps on her n- nodes on her on her vocal cords, and. Uh, I noticed when I go in there, I suddenly go, something familiar about this facility. And I went, this is where Joan Rivers died. <laughs> Over on, in my neighborhood yeah. on the Upper East Side, right? Yeah. And, right. and so I really started worrying about her. Did they have their name right. up huh? on the wall? What? Did they have their, her name up on the wall? Yeah, they have her name up on the Joan wall. Joan Rivers' yeah. wing. Of the- <laughs> With a circle and a, and a slash. <laughs> But, no, exactly. it said uh, owner of hospital Melissa Rivers. That's I think what I what I saw there. At this point, yeah. yes, Patrick. This Patrick point, had his right. hand up. Will you let the poor guy talk? <laughs> Jeez, you're gonna make him a cripple. I am talking. That's right. That's right. No, I, I, I never forget. Well, I mean, let let Patrick talk. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Um, I was gonna say um, before they give me any drug. Now, the way that they intubate me, it's through the nose. Mm-hmm. So I did an endoscopy through the nose, and you're awake for that whole process. And I could watch it on the screen, because they obviously have a screen for themselves. Yeah. And I'm totally awake for it. And um, the great thing is, it's almost like if 
if I were gay and giving head, it's as soon as the thing hit the back of your throat and you gag, then they it's like they hit the button and you're gone. Right. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it, it's good yeah. that way. Well, with, there's, with no, e there's no rush for me with any of the anesthesia. I'm just out. Done. You know what yeah. I wouldn't want? Hold on a second, Phil. You know what I wouldn't want to get? What? Brain surgery. Because when they do it's brain bad, surgery, they don't put you out. Right, right. Yeah. They have to keep you awake. They want to know what you're, what you're thinking or how you're. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is this, do you want pizza? Is this your prom? <laughs> you know, exactly. Is this when you got your first driver's license? Let me see. see if, you know. Yes, I have Phil. a friend who had a had a big. You know. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You know, yeah. go ahead. Go so ahead. Any, anyway, when they uh, uh, went to put the tube down my throat for the op for the operation, yeah. uh, I have uh, severe sleep apnea. Mm. And so what happened was they couldn't incubate me. They couldn't get. Well, the is there anything down. that's right with you, Phil? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right. Jeez. So you're a mess. So I, I keep thinking I'm a mess. Just my feet that are numb all the time. That's all. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. they they ended up putting a trumpet uh, up my nose. Really? Uh, huh? really a trumpet. trumpet up your nose? Yeah, it's a it's a plastic tube. Oh, I thought you were actually going to play like Nearer My God to Be or something hurt. like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they said that I was throwing around ninety pound nurses uh, around the operatory when they tried to incubate me, and so uh, and and, uh, and next they're going to charge yeah, you to sexual harassment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Are you sure this is this isn't when you were abducted by the aliens? Uh, well, Maybe again, I'm confused. So. That was a trumpet up another orifice. No, no, shortly afterwards, they put me on a table, and then they uh, felt around in my body with a robot. And uh, I'm sure that I was uh, abducted on a UFO. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, could... Did anybody watch People of Earth? Yes. Uh, yeah. that, that was pretty funny, you know. It's cute. I, I, mean, I heard about it. I, haven't I tried it. getting through it. I didn't. You know, yeah. you know what I watch? I watched that documentary on Andre the Giant tonight. I know? watched it a couple of days ago. Yeah. I was fascinated. It, it, I, it, well, you I'm know not what's fascinating fan. It, what's fascinating? But what a about, story! Yeah, but it, it, it's a fascinating film from the standpoint that, like, for instance, girlfriend uh, isn't into wrestling, doesn't know about it. I used to follow WWF when they did the first WrestleManias and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew a lot about it. You know, my favorite. Uh, I talked to. Uh, uh, bubbles about uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, oh God, I had to come up with the name and I forgot it. The big hairy guy, who was uh, oh yeah, right. oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, George the Animal Steel. George the Animal. Yeah. Steel. I was a big fan of George the Animal Steel. Anybody who goes on in a ring and starts eating the turnbuckle, I'm right. I like him. And right. plus the fact that this guy who's like just. He was in uh, Ed Wood. He played Tor Johnson mm -hmm. in Ed Wood. Played, and he, he had the hairiest body of any human being in wrestling, okay? Right. Uh, and uh, just was ugly as sin and just cra crazed. And come to find out, what does he do when he's not wrestling? He was a college professor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, exactly. so you hear of Haystacks Calhoun? Oh yeah, I remember yeah, Haystacks. Yeah, remember. Calhoun. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mother took me to the White Plains uh, Arena, or something, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Haystacks Calhoun was there. And his big claim to fame was that he ate sixty eggs a day and uh, five loaves of bread. <laughs> well, this documentary you know, on uh, on on. Uh, 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 yeah. Andre the Giant, he used to drink like 24 bottles of wine in a night. Mm -hmm. You know, mainly and, because, and, yeah, and, and it would only give him a yeah. mild buzz because he was such a huge guy. I mean, he was a, he had gigantism. I mean, he was a just a big fucking human being. Seven feet tall or something? He was yeah, seven foot seven. four. Seven foot they four. They said seven four, but you know, sorry, man, it could have been. Yeah. He was at least seven feet tall. At yeah. least seven feet tall, and he weighed 550 pounds. Mm -hmm. And guess oh, what? Yeah. He died of a heart attack. Who would have thunk? Anyway, uh, 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 but uh, I, I, the thing that I, I, she found amazing about it is if you don't know about wrestling, this shows you a little bit about the history of wrestling and the kind of theater that they mm -hmm. create. And, uh, and, and uh, he happened to be one of the first people to really be so theatrical that, you know, he was a, he was a big well, wrestler. I, I went to the Oakland Coliseum 
and I was able to get in and and walk around and look at different angles and watch these wrestlers uh, do their thing. Mm -hmm. They don't make contact uh, in many cases. You know, these slaps and these things, they're all phony. Of course. Uh, oh, gee, not, yeah, no, not, no they're kidding. Not, they're not as big as, 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 big as you yeah. think they yeah, are. Yeah, but you yeah. know something? When they do a really good job of it, and they do a really good job of tumbling and stuff, you really say, hey, there's an athleticism in that. You know? Yeah. Here, there comes, is, here yeah. comes Jack. It's all theater. <laughs> Definitely. Jack, here yeah. comes Jack. He has nothing better to do uh, than, yeah. a, than a show. He's wrestling. Now it's our, our, our mutual, our mutual uh, friend, uh, Bob Castro was a real my my old roommate was a real wrestling fan. That's how I got into wrestling. That was that he would watch it on in in our apartment, you know, and back in the seventies and eighties. And I didn't I had no interest before that. Yeah. They, they had they, in Chicago. I grew up. They they had wrestling on TV, but this is before. One of the things I was interested in about that show was talking about how the WWF was started because of cable and became this national thing. Otherwise, it was all local. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's now, by the way, the WWE Worldwide e, World Wrestling Chicago. Entertainment. Uh, the and World Wildlife Fund the, got pissed. World Wildlife <laughs> Fund got pissed off. Yeah, and sued them and said you can't use WWF. And they've been uh, using it for what? Oh, years. thirty years. You know. Uh, yeah, it's, Jack, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Oh, let me turn my camera. Oh, yeah, that on. would be nice. That would be a courtesy. It's uncourteous oh. not to turn on your camera. Well, you That's know, right. I, I've I got a CJB I, there. I've got a face for uh, a still photo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I cannot believe, there as long is. as I have known you, Bennett, that both you and I would be fans of George the Animal Steel. <laughs> oh well, George <laughs> Animal Steel is the best, man. Oh, oh hey, fantastic! Uh, I, I love here it. at this market. They used to run the wrestling matches every night on one of the UHF TVs. And mm -hmm. my first wife and myself would stay up yeah. to uh, watch the matches. And one Christmas, do you remember when they were marketing the action figures of wrestlers? Oh, yeah. They did that. Yeah, they they doing that for years. Yeah. Paul Hogan. And, uh... My wife found a George the Animal Steel. Oh. My God, I would me. I would want one. I would pay. Oh, I, oh, I, you oh. know, I have it. To, I have Harry it to, and everything, huh? <laughs> yeah. Donna asked me uh, uh, when we first pet? got together, what the hell is this? And I said, you unwashed person. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is George the Animal Steel. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. She might like gorgeous George better than George. Oh, the that Animal. was a classic. That was earlier. No, yeah. but George Animal Steel was different than than gorgeous uh, George. You George can't compare George. the two. George Animal yeah. Steel well, was George. was like an, uh, it was like a, th a throwback. Yeah, uh, genetically. Yeah. Neanderthal. Yeah, Neanderthal. Yeah. And yeah. he was uh, you know he was in uh, Ed Wood playing uh, Tor Johnson, and right. all these he guys like had George a lot Johnson. of them had a movie career here and there. You know, Roddy Roddy Piper. Rowdy Roddy yeah, Piper. He was in a he was in a science fiction film. Couple right? of films. One of the couple worst films. films ever. What? Yeah. Was one in some worst film. No, it wasn't a terrible film. You mean the one? Oh, listen. That thing was as bad everybody's as looking in their glasses thing. and see all the all, all, that everybody's an alien. I thought that was interesting. I thought was, I, was, I, was, I watched that on cable. I can think of a lot worse films than that. Yeah. Wasn't he in a film that uh, he played like this uh, small time wrestler that you know had lost his. Uh, Panache, and you know he was he was playing uh, things for uh, twenty five bucks and fifty bucks, just just to. I don't remember. Him. You know, remember? I, you know, yeah. I think it was uh, I think it was Piper. That's who it was. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> but you got you know, The Rock is maybe the biggest the biggest star in the world right now. Yeah, right. He just got a brand new film. That everybody's watching. If you like, which is based on a video. No, but game I mean, that he played, he he is the you know, and it's so it's such a crappy video. Game. He's the most. He's the most bankable. Rampage. Star in Hollywood, you Who's know, that? Uh, uh, the, Rock. the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, well, Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's done pretty well. Last couple you know. of films, and of like course, Andre the Giant yeah. was in The Princess Bride. If anybody, oh yeah, that was, I love that film. That is so much fun. Yeah. And now the guy who was the local announcer for matches here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, dear friend of mine, he's still mm -hmm. with us. He's ninety something now. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, when they stopped doing local matches on television here for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, this guy, Bill Mercer, who uh, uh, was the sports director at one of the radio stations, 
Bill be- and I became really good friends, and uh, he said to me, Jack, we're going to start local matches again. Why don't you come be a part of the show? That's what they call it, the show. Mm-hmm. Right. And I said, look, man, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 50 years old. I couldn't do that. He said, no, we'll make you a manager. We'll create a character for you. <laughs> and, 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 and he said, and you can make $200 a match. Just for coming around and throwing chickens in the ring or something, <laughs> and my Calling wife people. <laughs> and my wife wouldn't let me do it. Oh well, what, 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 what kind of pussy are you? <laughs> oh, the kind of pussy that knows which side <laughs> is bread is butter. Pussy, a pussy that. who wants some pussy. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Patrick Pretty had his much, hand yeah. up. Patrick. Yeah, I would do that. I'd do that paralyzed, and then that could be like the whole thing that. I get paralyzed at the end of each match. You know, I mean, <laughs> there you go. Patrick, you have no pride, no pride whatsoever. No. But then Where you lift them, you lift them up and drop, drop them down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> Terry, it's like we have an argument in the back room. How they show that sometime. Yeah. And then whoever my opponent is comes in with me held up. And then drop me on the mat, and then at the end of the mat, because I you can't get up. You're paralyzed, and you can't get up. You have to crawl <laughs> out of the ring. It was well, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Oh no, you're oh, thinking okay. yeah. of the wrestler. Yeah, the, the movie, the wrestler. Well, if he had said that, I could have told you it was Mickey, well, Mickey Rourke. Rourke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, yeah. I, I looked around. <laughs> but it was based on it was based on characters like you know, Ro- about. That was Rowdy Roddy Piper. No, my, I don't my think favorite so. Favorite was Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> who is who is now like so somewhat? I mean, he's he's you know they he there was he had some major thing about you know messing with his wife or something like that. So they now they the, his lawyer says, well, his brains are totally scrambled from doing all that wrestling, and you know that's how Gene that Okerlund. Uh, you know, also in this documentary, here's a name for you, Gene Okerlund, who was the announcer oh, and the yeah, MC announcer. for WWF. He was for on years. that. He was on that uh, that. Uh, that uh, um, you know the show, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the, the documentary. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. Patrick. Yes. Yeah, I, I was just recalling. I couldn't remember his name offhand, but my very favorite wrestler was Junkyard Dog. Oh yeah, I vaguely he remember him. Funny. He, I loved him. He, I mean, JYD came out there, and I was like, Hulk Hogan, who? Fuck that. <laughs> The by the way, by the way, do you know this? This is one way that we managed to to keep Tim quiet. You know, yeah. he, he probably <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We had we had Chief White Owl, White Owl, I think. Politically, Chief White Owl from Ohio. well, you know the thing they the thing they bring up in this documentary is that for the longest time there were these different wrestling organizations in every part of the country, and they all had the franchise, and nobody encroached on anybody else's territory, and and. What happened was Cable came in and Vince McMahon got this crazy idea and told Dad, why don't we take this whole thing nationwide through Cable? And that's what they did. And that's and, and, and they so, were able to offer better money to the wrestlers. They all went over to, to McMahon. They were all knocking on their it's door, at Smith least. They were knocking on his door. Like, yes, yeah. that's, it, it, yes, Linda McMahon is that Linda McMahon. Sure. And she's the Trump organization yeah. now. She's, yeah, she, same one. She's she's got some major contributor. Yeah, yeah, yes. Cable's uh, not as good as going to the fight sitting in the front row with your aunt, who's addicted to wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, uh, My Jack, aunt was just that was it was great. Jack has his hand. Yeah, up. it was great. Jack they throw the chairs, especially when he got out of the ring. That was the best part. Uh, Jack fight for space. Yeah, thrown off. Yeah, thrown over <laughs> the ropes. In getting to know my friend Bill Mercer, who was the local uh, announcer. Mm-hmm here in the Dallas market, he told me the joke that wrestlers... That was also Roscoe's yeah. name. Remember Roscoe, the announcer in San Francisco? Yeah. And then he went to yep. New York? His name yeah. is Bill Mercer. Yeah. yeah. Well, different, it's a different, different Bill, Bill Mercer. Different Bill Mercer, but it was Bill white, Mercer. This is the white Bill Mercer we're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a white Bill one. Mercer? Uh, yeah. Anyway, wrestlers have this joke. What has, and let me try to get this right, what has 20 eyes, 20 arms, 20 legs, and three teeth? Okay. 
the front row of a wrestling audience. <laughs> I say, okay. Oh, remember the, guy, remember the guy in Houston who did the ma- matches, Paul Bosch? Huh? Paul Bosch in Houston, the guy that did the matches there back in the I, 60s. I, I, I didn't pay attention to wrestling back then. Well, anyway, you were talking about how George the Animal Steel was a college professor. Yeah. Bosch uh, was a noted writer of poetry and had two or three books of his poetry published. Wow. Hey, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it, 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 I know that Dr. Gonzo, the doc of Comedy Rock, was a uh, English professor. Uh, he became doc- an English professor. Yeah, he, be- yeah, he became. He one. wasn't when I knew him. Yeah, right. So I mean, hey, uh, you, that, gotta, you got you got to work wherever you can work. <laughs> well, I now, mean, probably the only guy that didn't have some sort of intellectual pursuit that was in the wrestling business was a guy named Hacksaw Jim Reed. If you remember mm-hmm. him. Um, you know, his whole thing was he'd walk into the ring with a, a uh, not a two by four, but a you know a big piece of wood, and yeah. he'd just pick out his tongue and go ah. Well, the the latest the, the latest uh, the latest thing they do in a lot of documentaries on is Hedy Lamar because you want to talk about somebody with a dual life. There was the most beautiful woman in movies, right? And she wound up inventing a thing called frequency hopping, which is now used in cell phones. Yep. You know, yep. uh, and uh, she and a guy by the name of, um, of uh, oh, what's his name now? See, I'm, I I'm saying the name today, and then I, off the top of my head now, I can't remember it. But she had another guy she invented it with, and it was, um, you know, meant to uh, make it so that torpedoes could go, and they couldn't shoot them out of the water because the frequency they were on kept hopping. Yeah. And uh, it never got used, and then in 1952, the government decided to use it by then, she let the patent lapse, and the very things that made frequency hopping work are the things that now are incorporated in cell phones. So, they brought up that story in uh, the, the TV show uh, uh, on NBC, Timeless. A Timeless, couple a couple of weeks ago. But there's also, I think it's on either Netflix or HBO, there's a documentary coming up on Hedy Lamar. Uh, well, I thought it was so neat when they did it in Timeless, and one of the characters said, y- you know that thing about frequency hopping? Yeah. Don't the pa- don't let the patent don't, don't let the patent run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, but uh, she was a you know. So I always like it when I hear about a guy who's a wrestler and is like George the Animal Steel, and he's also a college professor. You know, <laughs> what's he teach? I don't know. Harry Bax, I guess he's dead now. What? Uh, yes, uh, John. Well, I just you're talking about Hey Hey Lamar, and the first thing I thought was was from. Uh, from Blazing Saddles. Yeah, Headley, Headley Lamar. Headley. Headley Lamar. No, it's yeah, not. Headley. They kept calling him Hedy. He says, Headley. It's Headley. You Headley know? Uh, but, uh, my, my high school science teacher went to college with Rudy Valley and used to talk about him all the time. Wow. Really? He was pretty wow. old. Yeah. yeah, he must have been really old. And we well, got him. I think we bought him some memorabilia from, uh, from Rudy. Yeah, I think Rudy Valley was maybe the whitest singer that ever lived. No, Pat yeah, Boone was. Close. Huh? Who? Pat Boone was. Pat Boone, close, but Rudy Valley in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the loop there. Yeah, you know. Pat, Pat oh, Boone's a little orange now like Boehner. What do you think about Boehner getting a job with the marijuana company? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I too. didn't hear about that, but I'm. Yes, but you'll tell me true. about it tomorrow oh, night, directors, Tim. Yeah. You'll, you'll, that one's you, true. You'll, uh, you'll, uh, you'll tell us about it tomorrow night. Phil's not going to be here tomorrow night, but thank you for being here tonight, Phil. Oh. Uh, Patrick, if you can be here well, tomorrow night, media. I'm going to be struggling for callers, I think. Uh, 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 t- well, Tim's gone now. I'd ask him, but... Oh, wait a minute. No, excuse me. That was here. Jack that went away. It's Tim that's still here. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much tonight. You, Jeff, thank you. John Rockwell, and of course, uh, Tim, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, he, Jack. He coached and, football. And, what? And uh, he coached football and wrestling. That's uh, what uh, he taught. Who? Uh, George the Animal Steel. Oh, okay. In, uh, Madison Heights. Uh, w- whatever. Anyway, we got to go. Uh, I think all of you should wave goodbye to everybody, okay? There we go. They're waving goodbye. Look at that excitement as they wave goodbye. It's really hearty, isn't it? 
see you all hopefully tomorrow night, or most of you, I guess. Uh, let me just turn off all the phones here so that Jack can use them next because he's here with the intersection. And that is followed by, uh, with, uh, with Amy Manuel. And then that's followed at 1 o'clock this morning uh, by The Intersection, uh, which is a, a wonderful show coming out of, uh, out of Florida. And uh, that's at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night, 9.30. Damien with The Exchange. And then tomorrow night at 10, I'll be back here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye.